So we're going to talk about how stress can actually make you fat. Okay. Now I've had some diabetics uh, test their blood sugars uh, when they go through stress and it definitely increases the blood sugar. So let's talk about why. So the body's response to stress is it spikes cortisol. It will also elevate adrenaline. Now cortisol, another name for it is glucocorticoid. Okay. So it has something to do with glucose. It has the potential to significantly raise your blood sugars. So here you are, you're on the ketogenic diet, you're not eating any carbs, you're even fasting, and your blood glucose goes up because you're stressed. Interesting. Also, trauma will do it too. I remember when I was riding my bike and my chain locked up. And I went over the handlebars on the cement going 30 miles an hour. Next thing you know, I'm laying there in a state of shock. And you know, I was like craving sweets like crazy and incredibly thirsty because my blood sugar you know, went up and then insulin kicked in and it went right down. I ended up with like low blood sugar. I was like, what's happening here? So cortisol will raise your blood sugars significantly. It will also release glucose from your liver. Okay. So we have this stored sugar in the liver. It can dump the stored sugar when you're under stress. So it ends up in your bloodstream, right? So then insulin has to come in and take it and put it into storage. Also, it deaminates. What does that mean, deaminates? Well, there's a little word in there, aminate, which has to do with amino acids. It basically takes apart amino acids. It breaks down protein and it turns it into glucose. It's called gluconeogenesis, the creation of new glucose from something else. It could be from ketones, it could be from fat, it could be from protein. But with cortisol, it will tend to break down your proteins. This is why uh, women, specifically after menopause, get atrophy. They start losing their muscle mass when they get older, and it just turns into fat. And then the blood glucose goes up, so it's not a good situation. Also, cortisol decreases insulin sensitivity and this is what will lead to insulin resistance, which will then cause the body to make more insulin, to make more fat, to make a slower metabolism. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. Also, cortisol will drive the storage of fat to your midsection or to your viscera around the organs in the midsection and the liver. So this is why people that have a lot of stress end up with midsection weight, skinny legs, because the body is extracting and breaking down protein from the thigh muscle, the quadricep, and the gluteal muscles in your butt, and it turns that into sugar and then to convert it to fat around your midsection. So now you know the mechanism between stress and belly fat. If you have not seen my main video on stress, I put it right here. Check it out. What is the best way to know if you have high cortisol. What is cortisol? Cortisol is the main stress hormone. And if cortisol is too high, there's a lot of problems that can happen in your body. I've done a lot of videos on this. Let me go down the list uh, to give you some ideas on what happens when your cortisol is too high. You get belly fat. You lose protein in your thigh muscles and your buttocks, okay? So you lose your butt and your thighs. What, what's that going to do to your knees? It's going to make your knees very painful and weak, especially when you're climbing stairs. Your blood pressure might increase, first starting with the systolic, that's the top number, and then ending up with the diastolic too. Allergies, asthma, acne, anxiety, low tolerance to stress. People start really getting on your nerves, especially slow drivers. Um, inflammation. Why? Because cortisol is the main anti-inflammatory. So if you don't have it, you fill up with inflammation. It could be anywhere, back pain, whatever. Um, blood sugar problems. You can even end up becoming a diabetic if there's too much cortisol. This is why when people get injected with prednisone, for example, where they use prednisone a lot, sometimes they can become a diabetic. Cravings for carbs and breads. Okay, That would be one uh, way to know that you have a problem with cortisol. Decreased libido, 
decreased potassium because potassium goes through you. And that's a problem because potassium is needed for so many things like energy, um, relaxing you, balancing fluids, it's a main electrolyte, etc., etc. You may tend to hold salts, and that's why you have edema as well. But also, you will lose something that is involved with making acids, okay, and hydrochloric acid. So you end up with digestive problems because you don't have enough acid, and your blood pH can go more on the alkaline side, not the acid side that a lot of times people think more alkaline, and that can give you a whole series of additional problems. But in addition to all of these symptoms, one of the best ways to know you have high cortisol is the time you wake up at night. Typically, it's going to be about 2 o'clock in the morning. It could be a little bit later, like 2.30 a.m., but between 2 and 2.30 a.m. in the morning, that's when you become awake, okay? Now, I had this problem for years, and I didn't know what it was. It was driving me crazy. It was torture because I would get up in the middle of the night. And of course, I had restless leg syndrome too, but I would just wake up and I would start to think and analyze and solve problems and worry uh, for hours. And then when I finally went to sleep, that was around 8 o'clock. So the pattern for high cortisol is you wake up at 2 a.m. or 2.30 a.m., and then you finally can get to bed right around 8 a.m. when you're supposed to wake up, right? Why is that? Because cortisol follows a circadian wave, and cortisol normally is supposed to be the lowest at 2 a.m., okay, and the highest at 8 a.m. in the morning. So everything is kind of backwards. And so when you should be sleeping, you're most awake. When you should be awake, you're mostly asleep. And then also you might have a problem at midday, right around, let's say, um, 2 o'clock p.m. or 3 o'clock, boy, you just want to take a nap. So that's the pattern of high cortisol. You can also do a um, saliva test. Uh, there's also a hair analysis. I don't know if they're still doing it now, but that's a really good analysis. They check your hair. Because if you test your cortisol with your blood, you're only looking at your cortisol at one time of the day as compared to the hair, which gives you an overall average of what's going on with cortisol. Or a saliva test, which is good, which you're measuring like every four hours through a whole period of time to find out what's happening on this pattern. Um, so the question is, what do you do about it if you have symptoms of high cortisol? Well, you got to find out what or who is causing your stress. Do something to improve that, okay? Uh, walking, long walks in nature, very, very important. Physical work is a little better than exercise, even though exercise is really good. Uh, but physical work to the point where you're, you can get tired because it also doesn't just deplete you of the excess energy, the nervous energy, but it gets your attention off problems. B1, essential. Nutritional yeast is one of the best sources, and lots of it. Vitamin D3, vital. Okay, And another reason why vitamin D is good is because cortisol tends to block the uh, storage of vitamin D as well as the ability to use vitamin D. People with high cortisol usually are always deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D is also good for depression. And vitamin D acts like cortisol in the body without the side effects. So it's not necessarily going to give you more cortisol. It'll help you regulate or balance cortisol that you already have. Potassium and magnesium are the two minerals that are physiological tranquilizers. They're key minerals that help relax the nervous system. And usually if you have high cortisol, you're going to be deficient in both of these. So taking those either in electrolyte or in food is very important. And then apple cider vinegar. Why? Because you have alkalosis and we need to acidify the body so then you can start absorbing the minerals and breaking down protein. Very, very important. I have a lot more videos on cortisol. I'll put the links down below, but thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.